Hello folks, probably the biggest single feature for the War Within is Warbands. Warbands has been described by Blizzard as account-wide everything and it's basically their brand name for a bunch of quality of life features that focus more on us as players rather than on the accomplishments of our individual characters. But does this new feature deliver on the account-wide promise? Well, let's dive right in and find out. Warbands will be going live with the War Within's pre-patch which will likely release a few weeks before the main expansion launch on August the 26th and your first encounter with Warbands is going to be unloading up the new patch with a completely revamped login screen. This screen has a new favourites feature which is basically the first four character slots in the list. These four characters, assuming you have that many, will now all appear together on the main screen. The screen is currently a fixed background image. It's not customizable, but in developer interviews, Blizzard have suggested that they are looking at us being able to change these backgrounds in the future. This doesn't mean that they are completely static though, because if you wait a few moments and your characters will actually start sitting down. And if you select one in the list or even on the main screen, they will stand up for you. One thing I'm going to call out is that there's a new top menu with the functions like realm change, character creation and the like. I personally find that my eyes are so well trained to expecting the buttons for these functions to be down the bottom that I keep missing them. So anytime you're on that loading screen and you're having trouble trying to find something, do make sure to look up to the top. Now Blizzard have said in their publicity that the new screen is going to be realm wide. So you'll be able to find all your characters on the other realms on this screen as well. So no more trying to switch realms to try and track down that elusive missing character. Now one thing to be aware of is that if you have multiple World of Warcraft accounts, this doesn't work cross accounts. So it'll only be the characters that are on a single World of Warcraft account. Now this feature isn't currently working on the beta. I have a strong suspicion that that's just test weirdness because the screen tooltips do have the character realms and a few other bits of information in them. But equally, because we haven't seen this on the beta, I think there might be a small risk that Blizzard haven't been able to get the cross realm thing to be working. So don't be too disappointed if that doesn't make it to life, but hopefully it still will. Now on your first login into the PTR and the next big warband feature will kick off as virtually all of our achievements get converted to be fully account wide. As well as achievement completion, achievement progression is for the most part being combined across characters. So don't be super surprised if you get a few extra achievements popping up in day one. Now there are going to be a small number of exceptions to this. For example, things like Insane in the Membrane, where really part of the point of it is for it to be done in a single character, which aren't therefore going to be converted, but the vast majority of your achievements will be. Now, one question I have seen crop up from a few people was asking, is there a way to opt out to that? The answer is no. Blizzard are fully embracing the account-wide everything ethos, and I suspect once this is done, there's really no going back to the old way. Now, one of the biggest requests for account-wide has always been account-wide reputations, and here the news is a little bit mixed. The new War Within achievements will be account-wide, with full account-wide progression across all the characters on the same World of Warcraft account. Dragonflight reputations are also going to be converted to the new system. In this case, they're going to take the furthest progress you have on any character, rather than the combined progress. As with achievements, not all of the reputations are going to be converted if it doesn't make sense to convert them. For example, the Winterbelt Furbolg and the Glimmerog Racer reps are not going to be converted to be account wide. Sadly, for the other older expansions, reputations are not going to be included at launch. However, Blizzard have announced that they do plan to convert these gradually over time, working backwards from the more recent expansions first. Once converted, the reputations will be sharing progression fully account-wide from then onwards. Now, to try to avoid issues where we feel that we have to farm things like quests across multiple characters to build up rep, Blizzard are going to be introducing first-time bonuses for quests. What that basically means is that the rep that you get from doing a thing like a campaign quest will now only come the first time you do that quest on any character in your account. 
All this does mean that also that the old human ratio ability diplomacy which gave a 10% reputation bonus is going away. That's being replaced with what will essentially be a double hearthstone for humans. The feature that I personally am most excited for is the Warband Bank. This in many ways is very similar to Guild Banks except that it's accessible for all your characters on your account. Like the Guild Bank, it's based on a set of tabs, each of which have nearly 100 slots. Now unlocking these tabs does cost gold. The first couple of tabs are pretty cheap, only costing a few thousand gold, but the final tab is 2.5 million gold, which means you're going to need almost 3.5 million if you want to open all 7 tabs. Oof. The bank also has a shared gold deposit. Fellow content creator Xanderfolk did experiment with this and has found that the cap is 99 million gold, so there's plenty of headroom even if you have a lot of alts. It is worth saying that the per character gold cap isn't changing from the current 10 million, that means you still won't be able to spend more than that in the Black Marcher auction house or in any other single transaction. The Warband Bank is accessed in exactly the same way as your normal bank, it's just an extra tab in the bank UI. Now, if you have at least two level 70 characters, you will get a quest in Tanaris that will reward you with an item that allows mobile access to the Warband Bank on a three hour cooldown. Now, unfortunately, this is currently an item that sits in your bag, which to my mind is a very strange choice for Blizzard to make. As well as taking up a bag slot, we'll presumably have to do this quest in every single character, which seems counter to the whole ethos of account-wide everything. Personally, I don't understand why this cannot be a toy, and hopefully this is something that the Bliss devs will rethink. What this does mean, however, is that we'll now have the ability to transfer gold and items cross-realm in a frictionless way. Currently, we can only mail account bound items cross realm. Transferring gold or other items has involved jumping through lots of weird hoops like having to have multiple accounts and trading. My absolutely broke alts and odd realms out there are certainly going to be glad of this new feature. Now, one final aside is that Blizzard have also said that they plan to change the personal bank to use the tab system in one of the early War Within patches. So all those ta extra spaces that we get from currently having to put bags in our bank will go away and will be replaced by tabs which will give us roughly the same amount of slots as we currently have. On the subject of transferring currency, and we're also getting the ability to transfer many other currencies from character to character. The new user interface for this feature works on a pull rather than a push basis. This means that you log into the receiving character and can gather currency from one or more other characters. I personally like this approach a lot. If you need a currency on a character, you can just get it without needing to log in to possibly multiple characters and send it over. I'm going to put a list of the current currencies that support this feature on screen. Most currencies are one to one, but there are still a few that still have a bit of a tax. Now, honestly, I don't see the point of taxing currencies for old expansions. There may sometimes be examples where a little bit of friction makes sense for current content, but for expansions from years back, again, this just feels to me like the devs haven't fully internalized the account-wide idea into their design thinking. And hopefully, again, this is something that they will take a look at before this feature goes live. Up until now, we've only really been able to transfer account-bound items, bind and equip, and commodity items between characters. In the War Within, account-bound items are being rebranded as war-bound, and we can expect to see much greater use of this in the future. There's also going to be a new class of gear, known as war-bound until equipped. That really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? These can be freely transferred to other characters on your account until they're equipped by one of the characters, and this will likely take the place of catch-up gear in the new expansion. Blizzard have also said that most content that rewards gear will have a chance of also dropping an additional warbound until equipped item at a lower item level. For example, perhaps a normal raid that drops champion gear might also drop you a veteran piece that you can send off onto your alt. Now, if you're thinking about the potential with all of this for transmog, then I've got some great news for you. While the gear type restrictions for transmog are remaining, so you won't be able to transmog a plate appearance over a cloth item, we are going to be able to at least learn the appearances in any character. 
So, for example, if a plate-wearing paladin gets a soul-bound cloth item from an old raid, that appearance is still going to be learned and be able to use it on your mage alts. And if you happen to have any such items in your bags or bank when you log into the pre-patch, they'll automatically be learned when you start up the pre-patch. Another change in this front is that when you complete a quest that rewards gear, as well as getting the gear item for your class, you're going to automatically learn the other appearances for other types of gear. So again, that plate wearing paladin will also learn the cloth appearances. Now, Blizzard have described this feature as retrospective, so it should mean that it will work even in older quests from previous expansions. Now, one thing I have seen is some speculation is the idea that we might learn the appearances for quests we've already completed. Now that, as far as I know, hasn't been confirmed, but the game definitely does know what quests we have done, so I guess that's something we can keep our fingers crossed. Now if you're wondering about rolls and raid, you are going to be allowed to roll transmog for items your character can't equip albeit the players who can equip them will automatically get priority in transmog roles. So it will sort of probably just work in the similar way to those off-spec need roles that we already have in raids. Now moving on to campaign and quest progression. Individual quest completion is not account-wide, so you will have the option to redo quests on your alts. Blizzard are introducing a new icon colour to help us identify quests that we have done on other characters and there's also new map filters to hide them which will hopefully avoid the quest bang soup that we get in Vildraken on our alts. We don't have a lot of information on account wide campaign and quest progress. My guess is that it's going to work the same way as Dragonflight where a newly dinged level 70 can basically go straight to the Emerald Dream campaign and ignore the list. In other words, there won't be account wide progress for individual quest lines but you should be able to skip major sections of the campaign once you've done them once in any character in your account. Now one thing we do know though is how the process of unlocking flight points and uncovering the map will work. For flight points, unlocks are now fully account wide. By default, the maps are not going to be uncovered, but holders of the dynamic duo achievement, which is for getting at least two characters to max level, will win a new toy, the Warman map to everywhere all at once, and this can be used on your alts to uncover the entire map if you want. On the subject of achievements for max level characters and the achievement for getting to level 80 will award a stacking buff which will grant a 5% XP bonus per stack, up to a maximum of 25%. This applies from level 1 all the way up to level 80. What this means is that your second character should get a 5% buff and your sixth and beyond will have 25, which is someone with 30 max level characters I'm really looking forward to. And yes, adventure mode is a thing in the war within, so you will be able to do the zones in any order on your alts. Anyways, that's basically all the goodies we're expecting from warbands. There's no doubt that this does address a lot of our major pain points around alt friendliness, though I do suspect that we'll likely see some drama in future around the choices about what reps get to be account bide and stuff like that. Blizzard have said that this is intended to be an evergreen feature which will be expanded on in future. Now for me personally, I would love to see warbands being integrated into the follower systems in game. For example, it would be really cool to have one of your alts join us in the open world, kinda like the Legion Hall followers that we could recruit, and of course doing a follower dungeon or maybe a delve with some of our alt army could be super cool. But what about all of you? What are you most excited about with this new feature? Are there any other things that you think Blizzard have missed out with the Warbands feature so far? Let me know in the comments down below. Between now and the launch of the new expansion, I plan to be doing a bunch of videos where I dive deep into the upcoming features, along with guides on how to get set up and ready for the new expansion launch. To make sure you don't miss out on those, do make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified whenever one goes live. I also do a regular roundup of all the major World of Warcraft news from the week every Saturday. 
If you found this video interesting or useful, please do let me and the YouTube algorithm know by hitting that like icon. Subscribing and liking are by far the best ways to support channels like mine. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.